Most people following the custom mechanical keyboard scene would agree that Novel Key's release of the NK65 Entry Edition, the now iconic 65% hot swappable polycarbonate keyboard kit in June of 2020, was a turning point in the still nascent industry. That incredibly successful launch seemed to make clear for custom keyboard designers, vendors, and manufacturers everywhere that the market for entry-level mechanical keyboard kits in or around the $100 price target was real and that the demand for such a product was much higher than anyone could have anticipated up to that moment. And the immediate result of that launch was a race between some of the better established vendors at the time to come up with products in that category. Almost simultaneously, both the Keydot company and KBD fans came out with announcements for their answers to the NK65 Entry Edition. TKC announced the group buy for its $120 protocol to be delivered in early 2021, and KBD fans started advertising the first round of the KBD67 Lite, a cheaper polycarbonate version of their existing aluminum KBD67 that would be offered in the smoke color as a special item in the Black Friday sale of that year for $99, with a following group buy campaign for other color options to start immediately after. After reviewing both the NK65 Entry Edition and the Portico here in this channel last year, the day has finally come to take an in-depth look, IO Sam style, at KBD fans' insanely successful KBD67 Lite. So you know what that means, right? We'll break everything about this product down to the core and try to answer this video's main question. Should you still get a KBD67 Lite in 2022 and beyond? Well, come along and let's find out. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Bring your DIY projects to life with PCBWay's printed circuit boards, prototyping, manufacturing, and assembly, as well as their CNC machining and 3D printing services. Get PCBs for as low as $5 per unit on PCBWay.com. Check the link in the description below for more information. Hello and welcome to IOSAM. I'm Sam Franco, and this is a channel where I do tech reviews and show you how to build, fix, and mod all sorts of computer gear. Today, we are finally reviewing the KBD67 Lite from KBD fans which means we'll check what's inside the box and then go through the assembly process, possible mods, and configurations for this keyboard kit. After using a 100% retail version of an orange KBD67 Lite Round 3 for about three months now, I'm confident I can help you decide if this keyboard is still relevant in 2022 and if you should get one, if you haven't already. As my regular viewers already know, I break my videos into neatly organized chapters with progress bars on the bottom and top of the screen to help you navigate my videos in case you need to jump to any specific chapter. And as a disclaimer, while I do have an affiliate program relationship with KBD Fans and some of its distributors in the US, the unit being reviewed here was bought with my own money in January of this year. But as it is patently clear to viewers of this channel by now, my scripts, views, and opinions are always 100% mine with no inputs or influence from manufacturers, resellers, or PR teams. I will place affiliate links for this keyboard, as well as other parts and tools I'll show in this video, and if you buy anything out of those links, I might get a small commission without any additional cost to you. But while these affiliate links do help to support this channel, they do not affect the context nor the content of my videos. The KBD67 Lite is usually sold for between $110 and $130, depending on where and when you get it. For round 4 pre-orders, KBD Fans is selling it for $109, but depending on where you live in the world, their shipping costs can add up another 20 bucks on top of that. But while KBD Fans is the most obvious place to get one, you can sometimes also find in-stock units at mechanicalkeyboards.com and Diviniki, which will give you better shipping rates than KBD Fans themselves if you are in the US. I'll leave links to all of those below for your convenience. The KBD67 Lite is an ABS plastic and case keyboard kit, which you can get in multiple colors. It comes with a 5 pins south facing hot swappable PCB with per key RGB illumination and the ever popular 65% layout with a blocker that you can choose in either ANSI or ISO layout. While my basic version is USB C wired only, KBD Fans does offer a special wireless version for $130 that has a PCB equipped with Bluetooth 4.0 radio and with support for a 3.7 volts battery that you have to source on your own. The KBD67 Lite is QMK and VIA compatible out of the box if you go with the wired version. 
The wireless version is compatible with the slightly different TNK firmware, which up to the third revision of this board was not VIA compatible. But now KBD Fan states in their website that in the round four, this PCB will work with VIA. So it remains to be seen how well that works. Other than that, this board doesn't offer any other stellar quality of life features, such as screens, volume knobs, height adjustment, or even included wrist rest, for example. But then again, this is an entry-level custom board, so one shouldn't really expect any of that here. The kit comes with a short coiled cable of the old landline phone cord variety, packed in a rather simple but effective zippered hard case. KBD Fans does not offer a warranty for the whole kit, although they do offer a one-year, very limited warranty specifically on the PCB, which I'll leave a link for their terms and conditions below, since it exclusively covers certain types of factory defects and does not cover loose hot swap sockets, diodes, and USB ports, for example. So that is definitely something to consider if you're not comfortable buying products without a proper warranty. If you're watching this channel, there's a good chance you're into building, modding, and DIYing your way through electronics, right? So, do yourself a favor and check out PCBWay's multitude of services such as PCB prototyping, manufacturing and assembly, as well as their CNC machining and 3D printing services. PCBWay offers you a wide variety of custom options for your project, as well as some of the most sophisticated PCB manufacturing options in the market, such as multi-layer, flexible and rigid flex boards, high-density HDI, thick GEMs, and SMD stenciling. All built with the highest quality materials sourced from the most trusted suppliers in the industry. Oh, and don't forget their awesome injection molding, CNC machining, sheet metal working, and 3D printing services. Such as these beautiful keyboard plates I designed and ordered with them and which will be featured in my upcoming series of Alps-based custom keyboard projects here in the channel soon. Check out the video description below for more information and for $5 off your first order with PCBWay.com. And huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. As for the layout, I feel like there isn't much more to say about 65% at this point that has not been said already. I mean, it has been the most popular layout for quite some time, at least in the enthusiast side of this market. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is that it gives you the absolute essential plus arrow keys in the smallest area possible. In other words, it is a great compromise. And yeah, the exploded 75% have been growing a lot in popularity since the GMMK Pro made that layout the new darling. But at least in the hardcore enthusiast circles, it feels like 65% with a blocker, such as the KBD67, is still king. Now, let's break this thing down to its parts and go through the build quality and design. As all other entry-level custom kits mentioned before, the KBD67 Lite has a plastic case. But here KBD fans went with ABS plastic instead of the polycarbonate used by Novo Keys and TKC. ABS is cheaper and easier to work with as far as large scale production is concerned. And that may very well be the reason why KBD fans went with it instead of polycarbonate. But as far as durability and looks go in this type of application, both materials are pretty much equivalent in my humble opinion. Polycarbonate is more resistant to impact and scratches, but unless you're planning to use your keyboard as a weapon, I don't think KBD fan's choice of ABS here is a problem, really. As in the portico, the KBD67 Lite also has metal threads for the screws, which is always nice, since it will allow you to open and close this board many times without the risk of stripping and damaging the parts of the plastic where the screws go in. The included screws also seem to be of very good quality and gave me no problems assembling and disassembling this keyboard a few times. The KBD67 Lite's PCB comes in black and has the expected spec sheet for this category of boards. USB-C connection, Atmel Atmega 32U controller, south-facing 5-pin scale hot swap sockets, RGB SMD type LEDs for per-key illumination, and full N-key rollover. Like the NK65 and the Portico, there is no daughter board here. The USB-C socket is soldered directly to the PCB, exiting on the left side, which is nice. And while the socket is slightly recessed, it's not enough to hide the metal prong of the cable, which sucks. Like the Portico, but unlike the NK65, this is a PCB-mounted stabs design, which is always a good thing, of course. As you'll see on the next chapter, this is a quasi-gasket-mounted keyboard. So here, that means the PCB hangs from the plate by nine screws, which are mostly located in the middle of the board and none at the perimeter, which does help to increase the flexibility of the plate PCB assembly a little bit. Oh, and here I decided to use KBD Fan's PE foam switch pads just to bring out that marble sound that we all like. While the KBD67 Lite has per key illumination, you cannot control it through VIA in the current version of the JSON file put out by KBD Fans, which I don't like. 
It's the same problem the Portico had out of the box, but that was eventually fixed by a later version of its via JSON file issued by TKC. And let's remember that the granddaddy NK65 never had this issue and came with fully programmable lights in via out of the box. So here we can only hope that KBD fans decides to fix this issue at some point, as it makes no sense to have via compatibility but omit the option to configure per key RGB through the software. Here, you're forced to use the hardwired lighting schemes pre-programmed into the board which are all good, of course, and many of them allow you to change colors and speed and all that good stuff, but no per key custom colors. At least you can't change which key combos adjust the light schemes, colors, brightness, and speed through via. The LEDs are decently bright and get the job done as far as giving a nice moody glow under the keys, which is what you can expect here, since in a south-facing configuration such as this, you're not gonna be able to use shine through keycaps anyway. At least until some keycaps manufacturer out there decides to produce backlit keys with the characters in the bottom side of the key surface. Anyone? Until then, all you can do, if you really want some kind of backlit legends, is to use Drop's Artifact Bloom Glow set in the OEM profile that I've shown in many of my past videos here already. It's not technically the same thing, since these have side-lit legends and translucent top, but it is at least a decent compromise in that direction. As mentioned before, the KBD67 Lite is QMK and VIA compatible out of the box, which I think most people understand that this is the way to go from this point forward. While QMK and VIA are not perfect, they offer far more flexibility than other proprietary software solutions out there. Not to mention that VIA just works. You open it, you configure what you need to configure, you close the software and you go about your business. No need to have a memory hog sucking RAM in the background or having to sign up to an online account and all that BS that some big box store brands of keyboards usually put you through. And to KBD fans credit, the KBD67 Lite was QMK and VIA compatible from the start, all the way back to 2020, at a moment where that was not as popular as it is today. So this keyboard, alongside the NK65 and the Portico, was in part responsible for the popularization of the VIA interface. So, kudos to KBD fans, Novel Keys, and TKC for that. And in case you want to see a quick tutorial on how to use VIA, check out the VIA configuration chapters on my previous videos on the NK65 and the Portico, since the process is basically the same here. This is not a very loud keyboard in its stock configuration, which could be a result of the materials used, or the actual design of the case, or a mix of both. Here, you get a silicon damper that goes between the plate and PCB that also works as a gasket of sorts, as we'll see later, and a thin 1.5mm foam sheet for the bottom case, which feels like pour-on to me. KBD fans went on a different route here when compared to the NK65 that had no plate PCB damper in its original configuration, although the new batches do come with a foam layer under the plate nowadays and had a huge silicon slab at the bottom of the case, or the portico that had a felt mat between the plate and the PCB in a carved silicon piece at the bottom case. I think the combination of silicon and poron work really well here, since it gets the sound balance equation just right. Not annoyingly loud, but not too muted. Oh, and the poron sheet does have an effect on the sound. It does reduce the plasticky sound by quite a lot, so I wouldn't use this board without it. I also did try a bottom case silicone mod by casting a silicone piece for the bottom case, as I'll show in the modding chapter, but that ended up silencing the board quite a lot. So I don't think this keyboard needs that mod unless you're going for a silent build. The KBD67 Lite has a polycarbonate plate, which was injection molded in my round 3 version. Another thing this board did differently from its competitors, which used aluminium, in the case of the NK65, and FR4, in the case of the Portico. And polycarbonate plates have many advantages. They are reasonably flexible, they tend to lower the frequency of the switch's sound, and they can let more light through for those who enjoy a light show on their keyboards every once in a while. So I think it was a smart choice by KBD fans to go with polycarbonate here. Not to mention that this probably also helped in the cost department, as injection molded polycarbonate plates are likely cheaper to manufacture than aluminum and FR4 ones. And the material choice plus the mounting system used here end up working together to make this keyboard feel the way it does. Spoiler, it feels very good. As mentioned earlier, the KBD67 Lite uses what I call a quasi-gasket mounting system, which is very unique. Definitely something I have not seen in any other keyboard kit before. Here, KBD fans gave the relatively thick silicon damper that goes between the plate and the PCB some protruding tabs that sit on the edges of the bottom case, 
effectively working as a damping slash suspension system with a single piece of silicon. Quite ingenious. I was a bit suspicious about this approach before I tried it, but I'm fully convinced now that this was one of the most brilliant aspects of this keyboard's design, as it helped keep the production cost of this board in check and worked very well to eliminate friction and thus rattles and other nasty noises, as well as to give the plate PCB assembly a decent amount of flex. Nothing crazy trampoline bouncy stuff, but definitely enough flex to make most normal typists out there happy. I'd put the KBD67 Lite between the stiffer NK65 with its modified tray mount design and the softer portico with its true pour on gasket system. As we all know, plate flex is a matter of personal preference, of course. Some people love it, some people hate it. But I think the KBD67 Lite lands in the middle here and again, brings a good compromise. But to sum it up, the KBD67 Lite's plate material and design work very well to make this keyboard sound good and feel good to type on. The stabs included on my Round 3 version of the KBD67 Lite were quite good. They are PCB screw mounted and made of translucent polycarbonate, really smooth, nothing to clip on the stamps and good thick wires. KBD fans also include their famous damping rubberized stickers to be placed between the stab's housings and the PCB, which works very well to reduce noise a bit, but without adding too much cushioning, such as band-aids and silicon stickers do, that can make stabs feel a bit mushy. Not something I particularly care about, but I know a lot of you do, so that's a good thing for those who love a crispy bottom out on their stabilized keys. I loop the housings and stems with my usual mix of half and half Crytox 205 grade 2 grease with 105 oil, and then the wire tips with the ultra thick Crytox XHT BDZ. The KBD67 Lite matches the portico in the stabs quality department, since both came with quality stabs that are PCB screw mounted, while the NK65 Entry Edition came with plate mounted ones. Good ones nowadays, unlike the rattly ones I got on my first batch NK65 in 2020, but still plate mounted, which are never as good as PCB mounted anyway. The KBD67 Lite assembly is a relatively simple ordeal, even if you have never built a keyboard before. Since this is a DIY keyboard kit, it comes completely disassembled, but it does include the hex bit you need to screw both sides of the case together. Although it does not include the Phillips driver you need to screw in the stabilizers. For that job, the wall stick is always my weapon of choice, of course. Nothing beats an electric screwdriver that comes with all the precision bits you need in a situation like this. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. Once you finish lubing your stabilizers and attaching the rubberized stickers on the top side of the PCB, where the stab's housings will sit, just screw in the housings using the provided washers on the back side of the board. If you use the PE foam pads, now will be a good time to stick them to the sockets on the top side of the PCB. Once that is done, place the silicone layer on top of the PCB and then the plate on top of the silicone layer. Now, attach all nine screws that hold the plate and the PCB together. The screws go in through the bottom side of the PCB. Next, attach these small silicon pads to their appropriate sockets on the top side of the case. Stick the four rubber feet at the bottom, place the provided foam sheet at the bottom of the case, and then sit the plate PCB assembly on top of the bottom half by aligning the silicon tabs to its respective grooves on the edges of the case. You have to slide the USB-C socket of the PCB through the proper exit on the left side of the bottom half of the case. Place the top half of the case on top of the assembly and use the provided hex tool to attach the eight long screws from the bottom. and you're done. The keyboard measures 31.5 centimeters in width, 11 centimeters in depth, 2.3 centimeters in the front side, and 3.3 centimeters in height on the back side. Like all of its competitors, it does not offer adjustable height, so you get a standard fixed six degrees typing angle when measured on top of the third row of cherry profile keycaps. The KBD67 Lite is also the lightest of the entry-level bunch, 
weighing 600 grams or 1 pound and 5.2 ounces with switches and ABS keycaps. The lack of silicon in the bottom of the case was certainly a factor in making it lighter, which can be a good or bad thing depending on who you are and what you expect out of an entry-level custom keyboard. If you want a brick that won't move in your desk even if you push it, this is not it. But if you happen to carry your keyboard between home and school or office, for example, its lightweight will be a plus. While a subjective opinion, I find the KBD67 Lite quite nice on the eyes, and out of the competition is the only one to offer curves, which is always nice. Now, I know my bright orange color here is not everyone's taste, of course. As someone who cycles through an unimaginable amount of keyboards at any given week, a bright colored board works well to light up the mood every once in a while. But for the average user out there, thankfully there are much more subdued options. Which is another nice thing about the KBD67 Lite. KBD Fans offers a huge variety of colors. One advantage of the round 4, at least in my opinion, was the option of a lot more opaque colors instead of the Game Boy-ish style of translucent colors of the Round 3. So I hope KBD fans keeps that trend going in the next batches of this board since I think the opaque designs look a bit classier. But again, totally subjective opinion here. For the sound typing tests, I included two different configurations that I believe are good enough to give you the two most extreme scenarios. Linear switches with ABS Cherry keycaps at one side and tactile switches with PBT taller cat profile caps on the other. Both with KBD Fan's PE switch pads applied to the PCB and the included bottom case foam. The linear switches I use here are these rather obscure CIY red linear switches I got from the folks at Nufi Keyboard some time ago when they sent me the TES68 switch tester keyboard, which will get some heavy use here in the channel soon by the way. I had never heard of CIY switches before, but I was quite surprised by how smooth these things were out of the bag. They are very light 42 grams actuation linear switches that come slightly lubed, but which I went ahead and applied my Crytox 205 grade 2 grease plus 105 oil mix just to take it to the next level. By the way, these switches are an insane value for $15.34 for 70 units at Skylong store on AliExpress. These are a fantastic option if you're on a budget and enjoy light linear switches. Then I paired them with this beautiful Domi Key triple shot ABS white and gray on black. With Japanese hiragana characters set in the cherry profile, I got from Drop last year for $96 with shipping included. This is easily my best looking white on black set yet. Just gorgeous. For the tactile configuration, I went with the crowd pleaser Gazoo Boba U4T in the 62 grams bottom out force variety that I got from rndkbd.com last year for $71.91 Canadian, also lubed with my same Crytox mix. Gazoo Boba U4Ts need no introduction at this point, since they are one of the most popular tactile switches of the last couple of years at this point, and deservedly so. The U4T, which is the thocky version of their original U4 silent switches, sound and feel absolutely amazing easily my favorite tactile switches of last year or so. They feel very similar to 55 grams Topra switches in my Real Force R2 TKL. And for anyone who knows how much I love my Topras, this is high praise. I paired them with this crazy looking cat die set in PBT, black and white, with these bright orange accents that match perfectly with my orange KBD67 light. If for nothing else, because this set was designed specifically for 65% keyboards, so it was a natural choice here. I got these from KBD fans early last year for $101.98 with shipping included. Yep, KBD fans shipping cost is a bummer if you live in the US. But the Vinny Keys sometimes have KBD fans products for sale with lower shipping rates if you live in the US. So I'll link to those as well whenever it's a product they happen to have in stock stateside. This set has a striking look, I'm not gonna lie. It's Art Deco font with dots for the navigation cluster and no secondary characters is definitely not for everyone. But since I am a touch typist and don't need legends for the secondary characters and because I was going for a striking look for this board anyway, I just couldn't resist. Cat Profile is a taller, more spherical profile, somewhere in between Cherry and SA. And they are definitely aesthetical. Alright, so let's hear how the KBD67 Lite sounds with these two configurations.
Okay, very different sounds between those two configurations, but both sounded pretty nice in my opinion. With the lubed CIY linears and ABS Cherry Profile caps, the sound was subdued, but not muted. Low pitch sound, no scratchiness whatsoever, and incredibly clean stabs. Very pleasant tone that will probably not bother coworkers and roommates too much, I don't think. As for typing feel, these CIY switches are very light and that might take some getting used to for some typists since you don't have to put too much force to actuate keys. But their smoothness worked out very well with the KBD67 Lights polycarbonate plate since the bottom out was crisp but not harsh. Then on the tactile side of things, you can see why Gazoo Boba U4Ts have a reputation for thock, right? They are much louder than the linear CIYs for sure. Almost 5 decibels louder on average, in fact, which is a lot. But they sound amazing. Really low pitch with a super crisp bottom out that was certainly smoothed out by the KBD67 Lights PC plate and the PBT caps I use here. PBT always helps to lower the pitch and smooth out the sound a bit better than ABS anyway. Although the cat spacebar sound, while very clean, was much more prominent compared to the rest of the keys when typing than with the linear switches with the cherry keycap set. This configuration might get you in trouble on an open office environment since this can get significantly loud depending on how hard you type. So be warned. As for the typing few, wow. Call me impressed. KBD67 Lite with Boba's U4T and CAD keycaps is now on my top list for a nice typing experience for less than $300 when factoring switches and keycaps. The tactile bumps on these lubed U4Ts feel as good or better than any Holy Pandas I've ever tried and sound even better than those. And the CAD keycaps feel so nice with its spherical tops. I'm a sucker for spherical keycaps, I know. So yeah. I guess I finally understand why this keyboard has generated so much excitement in this market in the last year or so. It really deserves all the attention it has been getting. Considering how well this keyboard sounded with the stock parts plus the PE foam pads, I honestly don't see much else you should mod here. The mounting system works well enough to give you a nice amount of plate flex, the included stabs are really good, so no need to spend money on the aftermarket, and the included damping materials are very effective to give you a nice sound without any unwanted resonance. So here, the only thing I guess I could do is to cast a silicon pad if you want to have a quieter version of this board. And for that, you can use this silicone mold making kit I got from Amazon for $22. You just mix half and half of the contents of these two bottles for about four minutes and then pour the liquid into the bottom case. I ended up having to cut the final slab into smaller bits that fit the spaces between the ridges, as well as removing the part in the front third of the case, since there isn't really much space there and the silicone would compromise the plate flex in that area. Which is also why I did not put back the included case foam together with the cast silicone damper to avoid completely killing the plate flex. Let's check out the KBD67 light sounds with the lube linear CIY switches and the Domi Key ABS chair profile caps with the cast silicone piece in the bottom case. Well, the silicon slab did make this board considerably quiet, as one would expect. 3.3 decibels when compared to the stock foam pad and the same linear switches with Cherry ABS caps configuration. And the best part is that the way I did it here, it did not change the great typing feel of this board at all, which is great. That is a nice option if you want to quiet this board down a bit for office use. And if you go with some silent switches and PBT caps on top of it, this could be a seriously quiet keyboard. What are my conclusions about the KBD Fans KBD67 Lite in this round 3 version? The feel and sound of this keyboard, with all the configurations I tried here, is simply incredible for its price range. It hands down beats the NK65 Entry Edition in every way. And while it doesn't offer as much plate flex as the Portico does, it definitely sounds better than the Portico in my opinion since the TKC board with its FR4 plate can have a higher pitch without some serious modding. 
I mean, I do love my original protocol, especially after TKC sent me a replacement PCB, which fixed the lighting issues I pointed out in my review. But considering that TKC never brought back the polycarbonate version of the Portico 68, as they are calling the 65% version of the Portico now, the KBD67 light becomes automatically the obvious choice for this price range. The polycarbonate plate with the silicon damper slash suspension mechanism works beautifully here to give you a balanced sound profile with a very comfortable type and experience for an entry-level price. The overall quality of the KBD67 Lite is very good for the price. While you don't get a premium metal case here, as you usually don't get at this price range for an enthusiast design board, at least the choice of materials for case, plate, and sound damping layers work very well together to give you a nice type and experience and a great sound. It is a light keyboard, and that has an influence in the feeling of quality. But once the board is sitting on your table and you start typing on it, you totally forget about the weight. The only minor gripe I had with this board was not even with the hardware. It was actually with its VIA implementation, which I wish had included full per key illumination settings within VIA instead of only through key combos. But then again, that is a really minor gripe, all things considered. I know some people actually complain about the carrying case that the keyboard comes in, which feels rather cheap with plastic zippers that are hard to close in the corners. But come on, if KBD fans had to cut corners somewhere here, I'm glad it was in the carrying case and not in the keyboard itself. While I'm sure they could sell this keyboard even cheaper if they sold it without the case, we would then have the chance of damage during shipping. If this carrying case cost as much as some much fancier protective packaging I've seen for premium keyboards before, while keeping everything in a relatively small package, I'd rather get this carrying case instead. Now, availability has been spotty for the KBD67 Lite for most of its existence. Not impossible to get, but it did require some intentional effort here since KBD fans and its distribution partners around the world were never able to keep it in stock continuously, as I'm sure they intended when they came out with this product. Of course, the manufacturing and logistical nightmares caused by the pandemic were most likely the main culprit for the time it has taken to KBD fans to finally be able to maintain a decent number of these boards in stock. But at least at this point in 2022, we might finally have good news in the availability front for the KBD67 Lite. When I contacted KBD fans during the production of this video and asked them what were their plans for this product after they finished the round 4 ordering phase, they confirmed to me that this would be the last group buy round for the KBD67 Lite, and that once this batch is completely fulfilled, they will finally move to a new phase in this product's life, in-stock product availability indefinitely. Yeah, I know, inexpensive enthusiast-grade custom keyboards that you can just go there and buy? Who would have thought that something like that could happen someday, huh? To be fair, Novel Keys had the same problems with keeping the NK65 Entry Edition in stock for most of last year, but they now have finally managed to do it as well. It has been available in all colors for quite some time during the first half of 2022. So who knows, maybe we're finally leaving the group by doldrums behind, at least for entry-level kits. And the availability situation also ends up playing a role in the competition for this product since many times people had to buy what they could find instead of what they really wanted in the last couple of years. So as the KBD67 Lite becomes an in-stock product that anyone can buy, we have now at least two very good entry-level enthusiast-grade keyboards in the $100 vicinity. The NK65 Entry Edition for $95, and now the KBD67 Lite for between $110 and $130, depending on where you get it. Between these two, I still think the extra $15 to $35 for the KBD67 Lite is worth it. I still like my NK65 Entry Edition and still use it regularly. I think Novel Keys has a great product in their hands, especially now that it also comes with a plate foam damper and much better stabs than the original launch version did. But while the NK65 does sound really nice, I still think the KBD67 types better, and to me that still wins at the end of the day. Meanwhile, we still don't know if TKC plans to ever bring back the really good Portico 68, or if Canon Keys and Wuche Studios have any plans to ever make the nice IK68 Aurora an in-stock item as well. Since these are two other relevant players in this segment, although starting at a slightly higher price of $135. A price range that gets them dangerously close to other enticing aluminium-built entry-level kits, such as Canon Key's own Beckon Echo 65, 
and the super popular 75% from Glorious and Keychron, of course. By the way, the Icky68 and the Bakanaka reviews are coming to the channel soon, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it, and if you want to see how it compares to the rest of the entry-level options we covered so far. And finally, we shouldn't forget about other interesting options out there from in-stock keyboard sellers such as Epo Maker and their super interesting new entry-level option. The TH66 that sells for an incredible $90 with switches and keycaps. And that honestly doesn't land too far from these other more expensive boards in terms of quality, sound and typing feel as we'll see soon here in the channel as well. Who is the KBD67 Lite for? Starting at $110, my recommendation here is very similar to what I said about the Portico last year. I think it serves well both veteran enthusiasts looking for a cheaper daily driver for work, for example, and newcomers to the custom keyboard scene who are not afraid to actually build their first keyboard and don't mind starting with a plastic encased board. While at this day and age, you can definitely get very good production mechanical keyboards for as low as $100, I still think that if you're ready to take the plunge into the more enthusiast side of the keyboard's market, the level of refinement you can get out of this kit can be totally worth the considerably higher price tag and the additional elbow grease that a full enthusiast entry-level build with keyboard kit, switches, and keycaps will command. And lastly, it is important to emphasize that this keyboard does not offer extreme levels of plate flex. What you get here is something more down-to-earth and more practical in that regard. So, if you're in the market for a bouncy board, this is probably not the keyboard for you. But as a light typist who does not crave excessive plate flexibility in my keyboards, I think the typing experience you get with the KBD67 Lite is really good and definitely hits above its class. As a result, if you consider all that and are in or near the enthusiast keyboards hobby at the moment, the KBD67 Lite might very well be one of the best deals in an entry-level kit right now. And if that's you, you might as well check the links in the description below to get your very own KBD67 Lite or any of the switches, accessories, and tools I showed here. Any questions? Leave them in the comments below and you know Uncle Sam here has your back. And if you want to check my review of the venerable NK65 Entry Edition, check it out right here. Or click here to see my ultimate guide of TKC's Portico 68. Thanks again and see you all soon.